So you've just refurbished the property, but now you want to know what costs are capital and which costs are revenue. Check out this video as I go through all of the details. Hi everyone, my name is Simon Mishevich. I'm here to help you reduce your property tax. And if you are an American watching this video, please do check out Purser Tax that is looking to save you tax across the Atlantic. I will be putting the details of their YouTube channel below this video. But this video is talking about allowable refurbishment costs, which costs are capital and which ones are revenue. Let's check out how we might differentiate that. Uh, there are a couple of useful videos that I think you should be watching. There are video links below this description, so do check those out. It is The first one is allowable costs to minimize property tax, and that explores the different types of uh, costs that you may incur in your business. And then what I want to really focus on is the allowable costs that you incur on your property. Now, I use three words to talk about refurbishments, and this really is paramount. The first is repair. So if you're repairing a roof tile that you have seen is broken, then that cost will be allowable to offset against your property income. Additionally, if you are replacing items, so you're replacing a kitchen suite or a bathroom suite, then those are like-for-like -like replacements and therefore also will be allowed to be offset against your property income. And for finally, you're renewing something. So if you don't like these pink walls that have been left by the previous owner of the property, or you don't like the three ducks that seem to be flying into the abyss, then you might want to replace all of those items. And those items would be renewal because you're replastering, repainting those walls, and those will also be a reduction against your property income, means you pay less tax ultimately. Um, now, I do get quite a few questions from other accountants saying, well, surely um, the replacement of a window, albeit I've said replacement is allowed, a replacement of single glazing from, oh, sorry, two double glazing from single glazing, well, that's an improvement. Surely that's a capital cost. Well, no. Technology has changed and HMRC are very aware of that. So they will allow upgrades of this nature to still be classified as a replacement cost. Therefore, anything to do with uh, improvements of boilers, improvements of electrical boxes, or indeed windows and doors, well, their function has just improved with technology, but it hasn't really improved the value of the property as such. And therefore, these costs will also be allowable, despite what many accountants tell you. So do be warned about that. Now, I do talk about like for like, and this is a classic example here. You can see we've got a kitchen here, which is from the 1970s, and we've upgraded it just to mod cons. Well, this is a like for like comparison here. So that is all replacements, it's all renewals, it may be a bit of repairs going on. So all of those costs associated with this project will be allowable to be offset against your property income. That's brilliant news. What isn't allowed though is something like this. You take a 1970s kitchen and all of a sudden you jazz it to the 23rd century. It's got underfloor heating, it's got lime strobe lighting going throughout the property on all the walls and so on. You've extended the kitchen into the garden, so now you've got a kitchen diner. It's not strictly like for like, and as such, all of those costs would be capital in nature. You can't just say, well, this is a replacement, this bit is an improvement. Unfortunately, HMRC will say, well, as a whole, what is the end result? The end result is it's an improvement in this example. Therefore, all of the costs will be capital. Darn it. So do be careful of how much you improve your property. Um, now, when it comes to allowable costs, one thing that you need to bear in mind is if HMRC have an investigation on you and you've classified 20,000 pounds worth of invoices um, as refurb. So the builder just said, oh, refurbishment. 
and then that's it on his invoice and put down £20,000. Now to HMRC, they have no information to put this on. So you say, okay, I've been investiga uh, investigated, here is my invoice. It says £20,000, it's refurbishment. Well, HMRC will say you're guilty until you prove yourself innocent from a uh, from the tax perspective, which basically means that you now have got to say, well, this refurbishment really is a replacement of a bathroom, it's replacement of a kitchen, it was painting of walls. So you can see, right, it's a replacement, it's all right. HMRC will say, no, that's not what the invoice says. It says refurbishment. So we, until you can prove yourself innocent, we will deem that cost to be capital. And therefore you owe us tax from previous years and we're gonna give you penalties, we're gonna charge you interest for all of the mistakes that you've made. Innocent mistakes. So how do you cover yourself for that innocent mistake? Simple. You have an invoice and you make sure that an invoice from your tradesperson states their name. If it's a business, make sure it says that. Contact details, telephone numbers, websites, etc. So that if HMRC have a query, they can go to that tradesperson without going through you. The invoice should have a good description. So the tradesperson needs to say it's a replacement of a bathroom suite, it's a replacement of a kitchen, it's extending the kitchen into the uh, into the garden, it's putting in new en suites, which would be capital, uh, but I've done painting and decorating throughout. Now, if you've got a couple of uh, rooms, some of which will be capital because you've extended it, you've put an ensuite in, versus just a, another room which you've done basic refurb, as in replastered, repainted. Well, there's a difference of how they are treated. So you might say to them, look, give me one invoice for all the capital improvement stuff. So the kitchen extension and the uh, building of the ensuite into the bedroom, please put that one invoice, but then give me an invoice, another invoice, separate invoice, an invoice that's not that one, okay? Uh, hopefully I'm making this clear. So you have another invoice that states all the replacement stuff. So replacement of the bathroom suite, replacement of the uh, kitchen suite, replastering, renewing of the paintwork, repairing some stuff, so that you've got two invoices, one for capital, one for allowable costs against your property income. That is the best way around it. And make sure that they put the dates of the invoice on their receipts or invoice that they give to you. Many do not. And again, it is a tax point to say for HMRC, which tax year should that invoice belong to. And make sure that you keep your receipts for at least six years, because that's how long HMRC can go back. So if anything, get yourself a good box file to put all these invoices in a neat pile. I appreciate that's a difficult thing because normally we just say, well, here's my wallet and here's my receipts and just throw them anywhere like confetti at a wedding. We shouldn't do that. These are very valuable pieces of documents that we need to prove to HMRC that we've got a tax allowable deduction. If you don't have the receipt and invoice, you're in trouble. Um, so that brings me to the end of this quick video. So if you've enjoyed it, found it informative, give us a like because that really helps with the algorithm of YouTube. And if you've got any questions, make sure you fire those questions in the comments box below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can, uh, normally within two days to be fair. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel so that you watch every video that we release, please do that as well. If you want to talk about our services or want to book a tax consult with me for an hour, then I'll leave the description fields in the box below as well.